Hello guys, what's going on? So I'm here with Mitch. Uh, Mitch, how are you doing? Um, very well and uh, happy to meet you, so happy to meet you uh, and I'm very happy that you contacted me via the channel. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan. I think what you're doing is amazing. I think that there is huge opportunity, opportunities just to keep doing this and at a larger scale and and you know I want to also learn about you and, and how you started so sure um, what what uh, what drive you what drove you to Armenia initially for the people that don't know you're originally from Australia you probably have a great life there <laughs> what happened well let me give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, background uh, first of all by the way we're in uh, my director's office uh, and he kindly uh, gave us the use of his office today and uh, if you can hear a slight humming noise in the background we're having some renovations done to park it in a conference room next door so please forgive us for that um, so I was born and raised in uh, in Australia uh, born in 1957 in uh, Adelaide South Australia Adelaide not too many Armenians know about Adelaide for some strange reason. They think, ah, you're from Sydney. No, I'm not from Sydney. <laughs> ah, then you must be from Melbourne. No, I'm not from Melbourne. <laughs> I'm from Adelaide, which the best way to describe Adelaide is it's this city right in the middle of Australia, or sorry, in the middle, but down the bottom. So the bottom part of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Australia, uh, in, the, in sort of in the center. A very, very nice city and uh, yeah, born and raised there and um, uh, I was a former police officer. Uh, I entered the police academy I think when I was 17, three years training back then. Wow. Uh, now it's like, you know, six months and you're out and uh, but three years of training. I uh, was in the police force for quite some time be before I realized that wasn't for me, that's not who I am um, and uh, I, it gave me a good experience but I went into uh, like healthcare sector uh, and um, actually prior to that I was um, uh, prior to that I thought about no more than thought about I actually I was very um, much pursuing the uh, uh, the role of a minister, mm -hmm. a Christian minister, mm -hmm. even though I was so naive, I just thought I want to help people. Yeah. And I, honestly, I, I was very, very naive, but I found myself before very long at all, I was so motivated um, that uh, I was accepted into a seminary in, uh, in Adelaide, did some training there and uh, but I, uh, over some years, I got a little bit confused, mm -hmm. and it became too formal for me, and it was something that I wasn't comfortable with. I, I have to be, I f I'm a person who has to feel comfortable with something. I mm -hmm. have to feel it's right. I don't want to be uh, hypocritical. Uh, it, so that's one of my, I guess, life principles. I want to be a genuine person. Mm -hmm. I come across as a genuine person, but I, it's something very heartfelt for me. So anyway, cut a long story short, that didn't quite work out the way I hoped it would, so I entered the healthcare sector, and uh, particularly in the area of disability, disability care. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, one of my jobs was to um, um, facilitate uh, people with brain injuries who had been formally in institutionalised in, in a in a central building mm -hmm. and uh, the idea was to be able to um, accommodate them in the community in a community house mm -hmm. housing setting mm -hmm. it was a very very uh, I can say visionary concept mm -hmm. uh, lots and lots of obstacles because these people are very sick mm -hmm had very, very high care needs and I was part of a team that were uh, 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 looking after their care and, and uh, their life in the community. And that's where I met uh, Mrs. Mitch. Wow. Uh, I was a permanent staff member and uh, Mrs. Mitch came along 
and she was uh, an agency worker. Agency workers are, you know, just uh, support workers who come when, you know, you've got somebody sick or something like that. And mm -hmm. then I thought, who is this woman? She's most unique. Wow. And uh, I immediately liked her, but uh, um, I was a little bit scared of uh, women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I didn't want to get myself into trouble or anything like that. And uh, I just, we just talked and talked and talked. Mm -hmm. Until one day I, uh, she, she asked me, would it be possible if you could take me home? Uh, which, because she knew I, I lived nearby, um, and I said sure, but she never invited me in her home or anything, it was very discreet, and it just, it just blossomed from there, and um, I, 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 she was the one who taught me about Armenia. Wow. Um, and, uh, how, how, long was, how long was that moment when you guys met, and how long ago was it? So that was, um, well, actually it was fairly recently, if you, um, uh, it was in 2004, 2004. Wow. Uh, so <coughs> we met, I think, oh, she's going to kill me for this. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, when did we meet? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to cut this part. <laughs> I think it was in January or February of 2004, mm -hmm. and we were married in November, on November the 7th. Wow, okay. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it wasn't a whirlwind because we immediately, we immediately Connected. knew each, each other, uh, and we knew we were deeply interested in each other's life. Uh, we'd both been through some difficult experiences. Um, but I just saw this bright angel uh, who'd come from another country that I knew nothing about except I'd read about Armenia and of course uh, Noah's Ark uh, mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I was previously doing some theological study, so I knew about that, but Armenia is only mentioned a couple of times, but mm -hmm. Mount Ararat uh, is there. and. Uh, so I started researching about um, Armenia at the same time that I was, um, uh, we were going out together. And so it, it all basically started from there. Um, so um, let me just jump quickly. So in 2005, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, Sonna and I, Sona, you know her name now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know her name anyway. Um, yeah, we came to we came to Armenia. Her mum was her mum was ill, and because I had met and married my wife, of course I had a connection. I felt a connection with the country too. Mm -hmm. But it was it was when I put my feet on Armenian soil. So true that I felt the real connection and I felt like I'd come home. And I've said this, this before in previous vid, it's sent a shiver through me actually. Mm. Um, I'd never felt that even in my own country. I, I always felt there was something missing, even in my own country. Wow. And white settlement in my country is only a few hundred years old. Mm. Uh, the Aboriginal community have lived there for thousands of years. But white settlement, I mean, we've all come from different, different countries, mostly from England, mm -hmm. uh, Italy, Greece, and things like that. My roots were in um, in uh, English roots, but before that, who knows? Maybe I'm Armenian. I've got blue eyes after all. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we, 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 when we landed, I felt this connection with the land. And when I saw Ararat for the first time, I just, I couldn't stop gazing at Ararat. It was wow. just an unbelievable sight, and I, I just feel that like she's a mother that's looking over all, all of us, uh, and so that's where I felt the real connection. And I, I think that's when I began to realize that I'd love to, to, to live here one day. Wow, you know, Mitch, I felt the same. So I wasn't in Armenia for. Uh, 
I left when I was four and I came recently 20 years after mm -hmm. and I had that same feeling when you land here something about it right yeah. and, and you, this video is also geared to a lot of people that maybe are I mean in this diaspora have never even come here right yeah and that like you gotta plant your feet here at least once you do you do uh, there are a lot of Armenians who talk very fondly of the country, diaspora and Armenians, and I would urge them if they've never been here and they get the opportunity to come, please come. You'll, it'll be an amazing experience, but think about, we'll probably, you're probably going to ask me this later, what about the possibility of coming and actually living here? Mm -hmm. um, I can say, uh, this is without a word of a, a lie, that Mrs. Mitch and I came here without any jobs lined up. We just came here as it was a step of faith. Mm. Well, wow. um, people might think that's crazy, but I was so convinced that this was like, it was almost like a calling. Mm. Uh, I could say, I felt this calling to come to, to be a minister, but uh, I, the calling to actually come here and see what we could do to help the country was even greater. Mm. And maybe that's my ministry. Mm. <laughs> I don't exactly. know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, at, at the in, to begin with, neither of us had a job. Wow. So uh, Mrs. Mitch was able to find uh, a government job, uh, but she knocked on a lot of doors. Well, she wasn't somebody just sitting back and thinking, mm, "There's no hope in Armenia." When people start thinking like that, of course there's no hope. You, you have to go with, come with a positive attitude and understand the situation here is, mm -hmm. there are difficulties, but, uh, but they can be overcome with cool. hard work. If you, you really, really want to help your country, there's nothing, there's no greater thing to do than to be able to come and feel that you're actually being a part of uh, the change Mm -hmm. uh, the solution, yeah, not part of the problem. Love that, love that. And you know, you touched on something that I wanted to uh, to say. Let 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 just uh, we, I would totally want to mm -hmm. cover mm -hmm. how do you come here? How, what do you do, right? And but sure. but but what kept you in Armenia? Mm -hmm. it, it, briefly, let's cover that. What? Okay, great. You came here as a tourist, but what kept you? Here yeah. versus okay, great. Let's go back, right? Okay, so so eight years ago, uh, would be the end of uh, I think the end of this month. Uh, yeah, end of April. It will be eight years we've been here. Wow. Uh, what's kept us here? Well, like that's it's family. Uh, it's it's not it's not our family per se. It's the fact that we feel connected here in this country because it is a family orientated society. Mm. Uh, so true. All families have their problems, that's for sure. But we, the, the sense of family here is so strong. Mm. It's, one of, it's one of the key factors in my opinion and I, I there are probably some other countries that, that have a similar kind of feel to it. Certainly not in Australia, mm. I can say. We're more, we're a little bit more isolated. We, we like to build our little castle and we don't want too many people interfering with our <laughs> life in the West. Yeah. We have a little circle of friends, but by the way, Australia is a beautiful place. I'm not saying anything against Australia, and probably there are a lot of Armenians thinking, what is this guy on about? Why, would he, why on earth would he want to come to Armenia? Well, I just explain. Mm -hmm. It's this feeling of family, of really feeling connected with the people here. They welcome you with open arms. Uh, okay, maybe it's because I'm uh, from overseas, uh, but I think many people get this feeling. Yeah, I agree. I've spoken to many, many people, and also from the diaspora, they get this feeling. Mm -hmm. They just welcome here. People will welcome you into their home, they'll put everything onto the table, and they'll say, welcome to our family. Yeah. Not just welcome to the table, welcome to our family. Yeah. And uh, this is a beautiful thing here. So I would say it's that, 
uh, it's that sense of family. It's also, it's also the nature is, is unbelievable here. Yeah. The history, there's history here which, um, you know, church history, uh, buildings, uh, ruins. It's, yeah, even it's, even it's, before it's, even it's, before the church. Yeah, in, it's just, but even before the church. Mitch, Mitch, it's it's so funny. People in in Australia or in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> I love my Australian and U.S. friends. They find something that's 200 years old, and they're like, "Oh my God, look at this!" Right? I know. <laughs> and then and then here we have thousands of years I know, old stuff. I know. I know. So yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah, it, 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 and that's that's the beauty of Europe, I think. Uh, but in this small landlocked country, here is this treasure uh, with so much history. We need. Okay, I'm probably jumping ahead, but that's why I would say we need more of the diaspora to come back and settle here. It's doable. It's possible. It's part of my job to attract you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, uh, yeah. It, it, it's do it's certainly doable and uh, it, apart from all of the problems uh, which exist not just here but all around the world at the moment mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's um, it's a country that I would certainly recommend especially for the diaspora totally and and we're gonna yeah let's let's let's, let's dive into it um, I want you know uh, first I, I you know I want people to know what you've been able to accomplish so far, which is amazing. I mean, we've talked a little bit on the call and the YouTube comments about, you know, many families that you've been able to bring. I want you to start there because people need to know that, hey, listen, I, this is what I do. This is how I help. You're an authority in this space. So that's why people should listen. So let, let's, let's start there. <laughs> Uh, you know, since the YouTube channel commenced uh, a couple of years ago, it, we just uh, something that I felt very strongly about. I, uh, I just wanted to show what life in Armenia was like, maybe from a non-Armenian perspective, but I consider myself uh, an Armenian uh, now, Armenian by choice. ABC, as they say, mm -hmm. uh, I've been told. Even though I don't speak the language, uh, I speak the, la the same language of the heart. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like to um, boast about anything that I've done um, per se, but what, what, has, what has resulted from the channel is a large number of people have contacted me, both from the diaspora and non-Armenian community, I might add, asking about Mitch, is it possible to live in, in, in Armenia, to live and work in Armenia? And um, uh, we had a uh, very, I guess we could say a big success story early on. Uh, a man from Canada uh, who was very high up in IBM and in the IT industry mm -hmm. uh, from Toronto, Canada. He's Armenian, never ever been to Armenia before. Wow. He contacted me and said, Mitch, I've been looking at your channel. I'm following it. Uh, fo uh, you know, I'm looking at an, another, uh, a couple of other channels too from, from Armenia. I think uh, Yerevan Every Day, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said, you know, I, I particularly like your channel because you tell it just like it is. You explain what life is like in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. can, we, can we talk? And I said, sure. So we... So we, we hooked up and we, we spoke uh, on, uh, I don't know, like Skype or WhatsApp or something. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a very nice man. He's uh, married to a Russian lady and they have two, ch two teenage boys. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, you know, he was, he was thinking very seriously about coming and he said, you know, is it, is it doable? And I said, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. And... Uh, he, so we, we uh, by the way, just in case you're wondering what happened there, my, my dire <laughs> dire director <laughs> is, there he is there, come in Mike, please, <laughs> come in. Uh, this is uh, my, my director, very, very, very nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, we, we're in his office, this is his chair, I made sure I wasn't sitting in his chair. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
united job for the good of our country to create systematic structure. Love it. And uh, Mr. Petros Mitchell is doing <laughs> just amazing. Petros Mitchell, whichever you want to call me, I don't want to go. Uh, after many, many uh, discussions, it, yes. uh, I discovered that he would be able to, well, he also discovered that he'd be able to do his work from here, uh, mm. remotely, on, wow. online, <coughs> still being connected to his, uh, his company back in Toronto. Um, uh, we met him, uh, he, he and his family, and uh, Jack particularly loves it here. He felt the same connection. Mm -hmm. um, his, uh, his wife and boys may have taken a little longer. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether they felt the same connection, but I, I can't speak for, for them. But uh, language may have been a slight problem, though they speak Russian, which is a big advantage. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, he has, he wanted to help in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, the country and so uh, in his own free time completely pro bono uh, he contacted us well actually he even before he came <clears throat> he said is there something that I can do in the National Center mm -hmm. and I said sure we could use you here we can use somebody with your ex experience here so he's uh, he, we've been in constant contact with him since he's been here and uh, he's helped us in many areas and he's also helped many uh, government departments uh, with digital transformation, Love which it. is his expertise. Love it. uh, it's amazing, amazing work that he's done. Uh, so I would say this is a major success story. And he, uh, he actually, uh, not in um, Yerevan, believe it or not. He's uh, he went. They went to Dilijan. Okay. And he was his working day actually started at four p.m. Yeah. Uh, to you know to coincide with the time difference. So from about eleven when he got up, or even earlier than that, uh, he would come here once, twice a week. It a, was a big, big effort worked with us and worked with different government departments so we thank him a lot really he knows who he is even if i haven't mentioned his name he's he'd like to remain anonymous yeah um but uh, honestly we can do with so many more people like that yeah. the opportunities of working remotely now are um, uh, much much greater than they've ever been mm -hmm. and uh, there are a lot of people here that are doing just that so Apart from, apart from him, there have been uh, families that have contacted me from Austria, from Australia, from the UK, from, uh, from America, uh, and in um, a family from Austria were going to come over. They may still come. Uh, they have no Armenian connection at all. Wow. Uh, it's, it's more difficult for people that don't have any connection. Uh, it's doable, but it, it's you have to then you have to then know the language, either Russian or Armenian. I guess for a lot of Western people who don't know Armenian, Russian may be easier. I don't know. It seems easier to my ear, Russian, hmm. but um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not a language expert. That's for sure. Mitch. <coughs> so there's that. Yeah. There's other. There's a. There's an Australian guy coming uh, next week, wow. he's got no Armenian connection at all. Wow. And he contacted me through the channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he was raised in a big farm, in a um, uh, big property in mm -hmm. Queensland. I tried to even talk him out of it because I feel it's my responsibility to, to tell the tell the truth, to, to, to tell the reality yeah, of what it would be like to live here. And he would like to live in the village. Wow. Um, he would like to help people in the village. Uh, he's maybe in a position where he can do that, but he'd also like to work. He knows he's not going to get paid much money. And he's a single guy. 
can't speak the language. I said, you're going to have to learn. Uh, so he's been taking some Armenian lessons. Love it. <laughs> I'm going to meet him next week. I think it's next Tuesday, actually, the 4th or the 3rd. Uh, yeah, and then there's a, another American guy that's going to be coming over. He's not got Armenian roots either. Wow. So I say American guy, yeah. And uh, then there are some uh, Armenians. We also had uh, we also had another man. He was married to an, he's an Aussie, New Zealander national, and that he's married to an uh, Armenian lady also. Mm. And they've got an amazing project in r and &E. I think one of our one or two of our videos have mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, r and &E Lodge and r and &E Open Air and Cultural Museum. That's an amazing project. And he wants to help Armenia too. So there you go. Uh, all of you guys in the diaspora, uh, you know, some of you are getting on social media and looking at all of the problems. What we have to do uh, is we have to love and respect each other even though we may disagree mm -hmm. on things. You know, it's a beautiful country, beautiful traditions, family oriented society. Come, come and share your expertise with, uh, with, with, with us. We need your help. Uh, without your help, it's going to be very difficult. We're not just talking about sending money over. Mm -hmm. physically come okay you want to test it out come and test it out first see what it would be like to mm -hmm. live here uh, it's the, the cost of living is fairly is fairly cheap mm -hmm. it, you know you can live very very frugally here if you want to if you don't go to the restaurant every day or something you can live very cheaply mm -hmm. my wife's a great cook so <laughs> there you go there the you purse go. yeah so uh, you know, you touched on so many things that I wanted to... <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. No, 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 it's, no, it's totally okay. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So, so, so where do I start? You know, like I, <clears throat> the first time Mitch, I came into uh, Armenia, uh, it was last year, I was stressed out in my job. I, I run a digital agency, so I don't need to be a, anywhere. I, I, I can be in Armenia, but I was stressed out and I was just like, Screw it. Let, let, I went to Armenia. There, my grandpa was also sick. But um, a lot of people, I think, are in my situation that they have a digital job. They're they're remote already. Mm -hmm. In their the, whether in U.S. in Spain, I was in Spain in Europe, mm. Australia. Um, the, the, there is no reason not to at least come and try of course of course like seven days just come try it out yeah. see it for yourself um, you can still keep on working uh, and and the Mitch said something very very deep that I want to remark which mm. is we need help yeah you're not coming here as a tourist you can come as a tourist yeah, yeah great fine yeah. go back yeah but but your expertise is needed here. I don't care who you are, we need your help. Even if, even if you come here and start a family, yeah. that's already help. Even if you sure. come here and <clears throat> teach people Absolutely. something, Absolutely. that's already huge help. Yeah. And language. Uh, language is, uh, the, the development of the English language here is something that is I see it's very crucial at the moment, uh, especially in the regions. Um, they have English classes. They learn the grammar, but they're not taught how to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, conversational English is very poor. So that means the teachers aren't uh, well educated enough. They're, we need uh, we need educators here. So if, you're, if you've got an English teaching background, uh, you could be put to good use in, even in the regions. Say, Goris, Gumri, uh, Krasdan, any of the bigger places, mm -hmm. you know, 
not just Yerevan. It, it, it seems like sometimes we're too focused on Yerevan. Yerevan's a beautiful city, uh, but the heart of Armenia, I believe, is in the villages, and uh, that's what we we need. They need help. They need help with. Uh, how can I say, sustainable, uh, environmentally friendly agricultural practices. There's probably a better way of saying it. Yeah. Um, Eco-friendly. Te yeah, technology, language. Technology. IT is booming here at the yeah. moment. It's booming. And, uh, you know, I think we're really going to be a hub here in Armenia. Yeah, I agree. We're a very small population, so you can come here. You could open a, potentially open a business, and we can help facilitate that even here um, so at least give you advice mm -hmm. but that's not my area of expertise I'm just trying to invite you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but there uh, is people here that but can you know that. Uh, like I said uh, family values you know something that I noticed um, in, it's yes. in the West there are, there are there's a lot of confusion about what is family now even and I'm sorry to say, it's so mixed up that poor little children don't even know whether they're a boy or a girl anymore. Yeah. They're being taught in the schools. If you feel like, for example, you're a little boy, you're four or five years of age. If you feel like you're a girl today, that's fine. You can, you can identify yourself as a girl. And I'm thinking, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. You're confusing these children. This is, this is bizarre. I think, uh, I'm sorry to say, and I'm, my, I may get, uh, I don't care what people may think of me for that, but God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> and so we are male or female. Okay, you, what you do in your private life is up to you, but we're male and female. Yeah. And don't... You don't have to go any further than that with so many different genders and stuff. Yeah. And that's what I see. The West is so confused now yeah. uh, and obsessed with this. With this, So true. It's not like that here. Yeah. It's, it's so, just not like that So here. refreshing, you know, to come and see. Yeah. Just, so refreshing just to see traditional and values And you're walking here. along the street, particularly now in spring and in summer, you're walking along the street late at night, late, later in the evening, Families together, uh, young young couples very quickly have children here. Mm. Very quickly, they want to have children. They don't want to wait until they've got like a penthouse and a uh, multi-screen TV and uh, all of this sort of stuff. And yeah, like, that's fine. If you want that, that's fine. No, they they want family. Yeah. And then you're walking along the street and you're you're able to go up and talk to them, talk to the children. But in the West, you it, not hang on this man he might be coming to attack me or something yeah take away my children or some bizarre thought they might have this is yeah. not like that here yeah uh <coughs> mitch it's it's uh yeah i'm so glad you brought that up you know um so many things just going sideways on the west mm. europe uh, spain included you know <coughs> and it's so refreshing to see what you're saying here mm. you know it's like i'm you know i'm so glad right and but the thing that like, deeper that I want to touch on, Mitch, mm. is purpose. A lot of us, mm. me included, <laughs> I'm not afraid to say it, yeah. we are without a purpose just going through life yeah. uh, on our jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and what I see a lot of times is you coming to Armenia, you are having a purpose in life. Yeah. You now have a bigger than yourself, amazing purpose uh, <clears throat> that that's it so you're you know like I think that you're in the States you're alone you're depressed you know you don't know what to do it's, it doesn't matter where but it's like coming here is giving you a bigger purpose to help Armenia think about that yeah yeah it's one thing to think about it uh, even, even I can say it's one thing to be, as I uh, am, my wife is, we're Christians, uh, we, but we, want, we wanted to put our faith into action. 
Yes. That's what I believe I a real it. Christian is. Mm -hmm. It's it's not about talking. It's not about trying to convert people. It's not about hitting people over the head with the Bible. It's about truly putting into practice what you believe. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. I said it a few times. It's to me, it's loving God with all your heart, mind, strength and soul. And also, and most importantly maybe, your neighbour as yourself. You can do that here. It, with God's help, we, we feel God's help in what we do. And we can see that from humble beginnings, we've had all of these people contact us. Mm -hmm. I've only mentioned a few of them, by the way. Yeah, there yeah. are others that are wanting to come, others who I'm in contact with pretty much on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, my job is to try and attract um, expertise from overseas, uh, from the diaspora and the non-Armenian sector, mm -hmm. uh, non-Armenian community, uh, business, uh, businesses, entrepreneurs, etc., etc. I'm not sure how successful I'll be at that, but I, I just want to be who I am. I'm not going to change who I, who I am. I work, I'm permanently employed by the government, but I'm only on half time. So the rest of the time I can just uh, continue doing my... I do my videos with uh, NCIE and also with uh, Mrs. Mitch. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to do that. But it's really, it's about seeing what we can do to help. Totally. Uh, Mitch, let's 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 go there. Like uh, I'm a non-Armenian mm -hmm. that just I'm very intrigued about Armenia. Or I'm an Armenian from the diaspora. Um, I probably have a bunch of excuses in my head. Uh, I, I want us just to cover some of those, like and, and debunk them a little bit mm. uh, to help them just understand how how what are the possibilities. Yeah, so, um, you know, if you're a young person uh, and uh, you uh, have some skills, uh, you don't have to have many skills, you just have to have a love for the country uh, and an interest in the country. You can come here uh, with um, a birthright, for birthright Armenia, I think it's called. Um, there's a couple of other uh, volunteer agencies and they can help you. Uh, we can even put you in contact with them, but you can contact them directly. Uh, that's a great initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, they can uh, hook you up with a, uh, with a, a family, a placement here or in a village and put you to work uh, as a volunteer. And uh, you get, I think, some remuneration for that, uh, at least uh, you don't have to bear all of the expense of being here uh, by yourself. That's a good way. Um, or you can come on an extended holiday. You don't have to be involved in anything. Uh, you could also... I'd, I'd be happy for anybody who wants to contact me. You can put a link in the description to mm -hmm. my contact. Yeah. For them to contact me and maybe we can put you in contact with people. We can give you the advice, uh, some advice on questions, any questions you might have, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, but so um, I can tell you this, that there is a great program called EGOTS, and I don't know exactly what that stands for, by the way, but it's a government uh, initiative uh, which uh, uh, which gives people the opportunity from the diaspora to come and work in a government department here. Uh, and the remuneration is very good. It's a great experience for you to be able to come with your expertise that you may have. And you can apply. That's through the Ministry of Diaspora, by the way. And um, that's a great way. I'm not sure how many positions are available, but uh, that, that's another alternative. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this, that we have a few of the uh, of people from EGORTS here uh, working with us. 
young people and they have a great love for the country. They absolutely love it here. Mm -hmm. um, sure, they can, they, they, they see the problems, mm -hmm. but it's about trying to be a part of the solution. It's about mm -hmm. seeing what they can do to help the country. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, we've come through all of the years of the Soviet Union. We've come through a lot of say well I'll tell it like it is. Pro progression, right? Evolution, right? We've come through a lot of corruption. Uh, I'm not saying that doesn't exist anymore, it's just completely gone, but that in now is a time mm -hmm. that we have these opportunities and that we have the ability to open businesses here. We don't have to pay off some oligarch to open a business. That, I can guarantee you, won't happen. And we will we'll make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Because if, it, if that was existing now, I wouldn't be here. No way. Um, I, I mean, it may in some regions, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even want to go there. But we're talking about the opportunities, and I think that they are enormous. Yeah. And uh, the, the amount of young people that have come. Uh, okay, so they've come from the diaspora, they're here for a year, and some of them and Hayek is one of them. He's from Igorts, and Hayek was, uh, was uh, working for the Ministry of uh, Economy. They loved his work so much, they offered him the directorship of the National Centre for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And he's a great man. He's a very humble man. He would hate to say, he would hate for me to say he's a great man, but he is. He's, he's my friend. We met in Etch Medicine and he saw my work uh, on YouTube, what I was doing. We talked mm -hmm. and he said, would you like the opportunity of working for us Wow! Uh, in uh, Brain Gain? You see, that, that, that came completely out of the blue. Wow. And uh, I can again thank God. Uh, I, I, I didn't, I had no idea about that. And I said, are you sure you think I can do this? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he said, yes. Uh, so there we are. But wow. he's he's a perfect example. Somebody who's come from the diaspora, who had a good job in uh, Moscow. Mm -hmm. This was a year or more ago he came here, and he is so focused on helping the country. He w he looks beyond the problems. Okay, they exist. We know that. We have to accept that. But you can come here and you can really be a part of. Uh, a, yeah, a vibrant mm -hmm. community that, um, uh, or part of the community that is seeking the good of this country. Mm -hmm. The opportunities are there. Totally. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so powerful. So powerful um, that I think, I think, um, I think, you know, there is, again, you mentioned the programs, we'll leave them in the description. <coughs> uh, we'll leave Mitch. Mitch's contact information. Mm -hmm. You can check his channel sure. out. Um, you can write to you can write to me either through uh, my work email, which I can also give you, or you can write to me through the uh, through the, the comments uh, comment section. Mm -hmm. you go to the home page, click on about, and you'll see the business email. There you go. Uh, so so like yeah, it's just just that's important like. Um, People are more than happy to help you. That's just one important thing. More than happy to help you. Uh, you know, that's 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 something very important. Mm. And and I want to transition into um, how can we get? This is a little bit of a discussion between you and me, Mitch. Mm. How can we get <coughs> thousands, tens of thousands, mm. hundreds of thousands, and hopefully one day even millions of Armenians and non-Armenians. Uh, to come back uh, and live here and yeah and, and live what do you think needs to happen this is a very simplistic answer and uh, some people might think this man's crazy but well I probably am a little <laughs> bit crazy um, we have to learn how to love each other. 
as a community. I've said I love this, I love the atmosphere here, but there is, we are divided on levels, different so levels. So true, so true. We get so um, aggravated, uh, obsessed with politics, with leadership, uh, that we take our minds off what is the crucial thing here, and that is the rebuilding of our country. Mm. You cannot expect one man, one woman, or even a government to change the country. We have to change. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who have to change the way we think. As long as we are divided, the situation is going to be relatively the same. Okay, there'll be some, there'll be a few that come, there'll be, you know, mm -hmm. we recently had quite a few that have come, actually. Um, but in order for us to really progress as a nation, we have to come together, we have to learn how to work together, we have to learn to agree to disagree, Mm -hmm. that we have Correct. different opinions. Correct. It's not about, it's not all about the leader of the country for goodness sake. It's yes. about us. You have to turn it back to yourself. Whenever somebody is pointing a finger at you, or sorry, if I'm pointing a finger at you, can you see this? What, what's, what's unique, what's unique, what's something that you don't see about this? Okay, I'm pointing, but three fingers are pointing back to me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people have heard that before. So before you point fingers, look at your own shortcomings. You know, what, what am I actually doing? Am wow. I just on social media all day long saying this, that and the other about how bad things are here? Or am I contributing something positive? Wow. I, wow, you gave the best answer ever. <clears throat> oh my God. Uh, Oh my God, people, you know, people might say... Yeah, it's you know, a simplistic answer. People might say a lot of things about you, but they cannot say that you're out of touch. You just hit the nail on the head. And mm. uh, I see it myself on my end. Yeah. Listen, Armenians, or people, people typically, but I think Armenians have a lot of ego, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that, that, that typically avoids or doesn't help no. in... In, in, in making things happen overall, right? And, and what you're saying is, regardless of your political view, yeah. or what you think is, leave your, leave your ego or your thoughts aside. Yeah. The bigger purpose is Armenia, Armenia, Armenia. Yeah. And, 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 and I've seen it, Mitch, I've seen it like where my, my ego gets in the way. My ego is like, yeah. oh, well, this guy. It's easy to get. I'm, I'm better than this guy. It's blah, easy blah, blah, to get caught up. But listen, the, you know, mm -hmm. there is no space for criticism yeah. or judgment. No, it doesn't get any. It doesn't get you anywhere. In the the, end. It, and and you are doing a disservice mm -hmm. to your nation yeah. by thinking like that. Like I'm t now, I'm telling this to myself. You don't want to collaborate with people. You don't want to come here and do things. Yeah. And and you know. You're yeah. doing a disservice to your nation and to yourself yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, do you, for example, do you, do, you think that the, do you think the government in uh, America, for example, is, is, abs is absolutely perfect? Of course not. And neither is the opposition perfect. Mm -hmm. There is no perfect government. Um, it's what we can do to help. It, I think it was John F. Kennedy that said, don't ask what the country can do for you, rather ask what you can do for your country. Wow. And I think uh, uh, I re I, I'll remember that until my, my grave. Wow. What can you do for your country? Stop thinking that the government's going to solve all your problems. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's simply not going. It's not possible. But if we work together, we, you know, um, I, I interviewed um, Professor Ani Abrahamian. Uh, she's uh, the um, uh, brilliant nuclear physicist, Armenian nuclear physicist in uh, Notre Dame in um, 
in, in America, university. And she's also the director of uh, the Yerevan Physics Institute, which is called something new now. It's called... Well, I can't remember what it is. It doesn't matter. It was a formerly Yerevan uh, Physics Institute. And she said, her grandmother once said to her, uh, you can't have spring with just one flower. In other words, it's all of the flowers together that make the spring. So, it, it, again, it's, it, when we work together, we can achieve great things. So, so when, I, when I actually see the, the reality of that, we're a small little team here. We don't work in a beautiful building, but we have a beautiful team spirit. We're completely on the same page. We want to help Armenia. And if you knew the salary of my boss, you would die of a heart attack because it's very, very low uh, for a director in the government. Mine is much lower than that. But I'm not complaining. Uh, I, I, knew, I knew that before. It's, it's a joy for me to come to work to know that I can do some little part to help Armenia in a, for the future. So that's what we, it's not, it's, it, you don't have to come and do something great. You just have to come and do something for the good of the country by working together with people of like mind. Mm -hmm. Because there are many people here who I won't have anything to do with, who just, uh, they, they say things like, uh, Armenians, there's no future in Armenia. Uh, it, it's, it's a terrible country, la 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 la. And I say, it sounds to me like you're not Armenian. Mm -hmm. The true Armenian wouldn't say that. True. If, you, true. If, if this is the case, and Armenia is so terrible, please leave. We, we don't want you here. Mm -hmm. well, what's, what's the point in being here? And yet, at the, in the same breath, they'll say, oh, well, you know, it's... it's a, it's nice, it's cheap here, I, I, I'm, I'm okay here, la 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 la. No, no, you've got that kind of attitude. We don't need that kind of attitude true. here. Well, so we need more people to come with the positive attitude uh, and, and we can do great things. Great, great things. Exactly. Just, just come with a positive attitude, yeah. wanting to help. Yeah. That's it. The rest, like, don't worry. This is so important. We get bogged down on... Yeah. Oh my God! Well, I don't know if I'm 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 gonna be useful. Come with a positive attitude, with yeah. willingness to help. Yeah. We'll get your place. Yeah. We'll find your place. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Even if it's not Mitch, even if it's not uh, <clears throat> even if it's not the environment here, we are programmed here in Armenia to help you find your place. Mm -hmm. Coming and collaborating. Mm -hmm. If you see someone loves Armenia is pushing. Yeah. You know, just work on, you know, just work on collaborating, uh, you know, yeah. push that agenda of yeah. Armenia forward. Well, there's, a, there's so many people, there, there, we, we, uh, collaboration is, is a great word, but it's, 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 it's nothing unless the word is put into action. Totally. It's the same as love. Love is a verb. It's a doing word. So if you're not doing love, you're not loving at all. True. If you say, I love you, but you don't actually love the person, you're not. So collaboration is really working with other people and other businesses and other organizations and other groups, whatever that be, it's really working together. And we kind of pride ourselves on that here. We have lots and lots of different uh, people, um, smaller SMEs, um, uh, bigger ones, charitable organizations coming here and we love to, to, to have them and just sit around and talk mm -hmm. and say what can we do to help yeah and and you you begin the work of collaboration it's a work you know and uh, we've made so many great contacts and I know this country uh, will go forward if we work together it's going to go forward so it's enough the, the negative all of the negative stuff it's enough you know all of the problems that we have on our border 
uh, on our borders if we work together. If we're really, if we're really focused on working together, we can we can come up with a, 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 a solution is there. Totally. A solution is there. Totally. And, and you know, I, just one last thing for all the people that I want to add this because this is important. <clears throat> um, if you, you know, there are many, many people might be thinking, well, I don't want, I love coming here to Armenia, helping, uh, but <clears throat> you don't need to necessarily work here no. And find a job here. You yeah. can find a remote job. Yeah. There is nothing keeping you from finding a remote job and living here yeah. and having a freaking awesome American salary <laughs> or yeah. Austrian salary yeah. that you can spend here like a yeah. like like whatever and and still help Armenia just by you living here with a remote job. You're already helping Armenia. And if you can help even more with the things we've discussed here awesome so so uh don't think that yeah don't think that y you're destined for misery no it's it's, <laughs> it's 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 up to you you can find remote jobs everywhere and we're going to work on uh, f helping you know helping this uh, de develop and evolve it, it and and here's an important point if mrs mitch and i can come from australia with all but a few thousand dollars. My, we, we had enough money to buy an apartment here, but then aside from that, a few thousand dollars, no jobs lined up. When we found jobs, initially I was working, uh, I was doing some uh, uh, some English lessons from, from home. I would teach uh, Armenian young people. Um, Converse, my specialty was in conversational English, not in grammar. Don't start with that. <laughs> start with conversation. True, exactly. exactly. Uh, so, if we both have Armenian jobs here and survive, okay, we don't go to restaurants all the time, we can't afford to, but we have a great life. We've got some amazing friends. And we've got an adopted family, which you've probably seen on yep. the channel, who I, I, I just don't have words to, it almost brings tears to my eyes whenever I think of them. They're just so lovely, mm -hmm. so humble. Uh, don't, st just people, it's doable. Uh, if we can do it, if we don't, we're not working online. We don't have any f income at all from Australia. Oh. And in fact, when I retire, I reach retirement age, I think the retirement age for me in Australia is 68 now, 67 or 68. I'm 65 now. When I reach that age, I can't get a pension. Why? Because you have to physically live in Australia. You have to, I would have, Mrs. Mitch and I would have to return to Australia. We would have to live there for two years before we could come back to Armenia. And even then, you can only get part pension. And we don't want to go back and do that. Mm. And some people might think, but that's stupid. Okay, it's stupid for you, but not stupid for us. Exactly. We trust in God. He's provided all of this for us. And uh, you don't need much to live a happy life here at all. Totally. Apartments, uh, houses, and if you want to go a little bit further out from Yerevan, are, are still relatively cheap, uh, certainly by Western standards. I mean, uh, we, there's no possible way we could have bought a home in Australia. No possible way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 you, if you can, if you've got an online job, and I, I, I've spoken with a few people who've, and, and a, one lady who's a young lady. She was from. Uh, from England, um, she's Armenian, and she came here with an online job. Uh, lost a little bit of contact with her, but it's it's perfectly doable. Perfectly doable. I mean, calm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Mitch, this is amazing. Thank and you so if much. you're if you're retired, okay, I love that. Go retirees, ahead. Retirees, don't forget the retirees. Yes, if you're retired. Uh, here's a perfect example. Uh, one friend of mine from uh, Fresno, California. 
He's retirement age, not quite there yet. He's come to, uh, I think he's from, uh, originally from Lebanon, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, found his way over to the States, successful businessman, and he wanted to come here and live. He wants to do his part to help Armenia also. So he's not focused on his, he's, he's probably going to get a pension from America. That's probably doable from there, not so much from Australia for some bizarre reason. But anyway, uh, so he's here and he's building a home here. Wow. Um, a little bit further out from Zovany. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy to, to complain. Very, very easy. Very easy to find fault with other people. Remember the three fingers pointing back to you. Don't start accusing people. Don't start accusing your country. Just think of what you can do. Think of the opportunities here, the lifestyle here. It's beautiful. Uh, if, you, if you see the beauty and f you, can, you feel the beauty and just go with that and you, you can have an amazing life, you can feel that you're contributing to the society and really putting your life to good use. Wow. Rather than sitting in some... I don't It's not so much that you're sitting in a palace in the West or anything like that, but some people are so focused on the mater on material things, they lose sight of what's really important in life. True. That's to live a fulfilling life, a loving people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's the most important thing for us. I love that. To fulfill your life is to, is to help in whatever way you can other people and you'll find great reward in that yourself. You feel much, much better and complete as a human being. Totally. So, so we basically covered all age ranges, Mitch. Like for young people, come here, you know, enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can find a soulmate here. For people with kids already, yeah, come here. What a perfect it's place a, to bring up children. It's an awesome place to bring up children. Family values, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Retiree, mm -hmm. still Retiring. awesome place to yeah. retire. It's yeah. almost like people go to Florida from the <coughs> all over the states to retire. This is the Florida of uh, of the whole world. Almost <laughs> like. uh, yeah. So yeah. so so come here. The nature, yeah. everything. Yeah. Any last words? Thank you so much, Mitch, for for your for your time. Uh, I, I was going to say something, but I think I probably already said enough. Um, but uh, it's so it's I'm I'm so appreciative of the opportunity. Uh, you're a you're a wonderful young man. Uh, I, I I can sense I sense your love for the country, and I think uh, before too long, <laughs> you you might even end up here yourself, uh, God willing. But uh, yeah. Uh, it, it is truly an honour, uh, and, uh, and I so much appreciate uh, you for coming and interviewing me today. Thank oh. you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Talk to you guys soon. Okay.